This is a short video on how to use Circa from OM Genomics to plot RNA-seq differential expression data from DE-seq to the bioconductor package in R. So we have some data files and let's take a quick look at one of them. This is what it looks like on the inside. Now let's go try to load it into Circa. I'm going to assume that this is GRCH38, so I click that and it gives me the chromosome sizes and ideogram and everything there. And then I can go and choose some files and I'm going to choose all three of these files and just open them all. It asks to remove CHR prefixes, which we do just to keep it nice and clean looking. And that's great. And then I'm going to pick one of them. I'm going to choose a scatter plot first because I want to show the log to fold change first. And for chromosome, I'm going to pick my chromosome. For position, I'm going to pick where each gene starts. And now we are ready to submit the layer. Uh, note here that it says that the mitochondria is not any data points on the mitochondria are not shown, and data points on chromosome 10 might be missing. This is probably because there's a data point that might be outside the size of chromosome 10. Maybe this is your CH37 data, so that could be the reason, um, but just something to look out for when you see these if you don't want some of your data to be missing. So I'm just going to close that because this isn't my data. And for this scatter plot, this is now the log to fold change. And I'm going to set a fill color for this just to kind of make that clear. And you can obviously, you know, set it to whatever IGB values you want. All right, so this is the color that I want for that. So I can make a legend or something later showing it. And I can add tracks. Let's say... I want to do the p-values next. I can also do adjusted p-values. I'll just do the regular p-values for now. And we're again going to say chromosome and then the start position. And that should be good. Or let's make it an area chart. Oh, I have to choose these again. Uh, p-value. And good, just to show you that you can also do an area chart. Very nice. And uh, I can give that a different color. Let's say I want it to be nice and gross green. And I'll do like slightly darker green outlines. Very trippy. Okay. Now let's go and load the second data set, TMZ, here. So you choose that file. And let's say I want to do a scatter plot and I set the chromosome. And oh, it said there are no valid columns in this file of type number. So it can only show, so this will only show the columns of the data that are the right types. So chromosome is a string, right? can be any text, but for position and Y value, they have to be numbers. So that means that we need to go and take a look at our file. So let's pop over and do that. And I'm actually going to open this. I'm going to go into Google Sheets and import here. And so this is a good way to figure out why the columns seem to not be entirely made up of numbers. Aha, uh -huh. so it was the p-value we were looking at, and there are some na values in here, and yeah, it also just looks like there's some, there might be some issues in general in this file, but let's start by seeing if we can get rid of these values. So it looks like we have two columns that are problematic here. I will set a filter. So let me start with this one. I'm going to go into data and say actually both of these columns. I'll go into data, say create a filter. 
and I'm going to filter this by the condition custom formula. I don't know why they make it this complicated, but you can basically just say is a number and I'm going to say F2 because I'm in this F column and I want to start at number row number two. And I'm going to say okay. And so now you can see all the NAs in this column have been removed. Very nice. Looks like we still have some NAs in column G. So I'm going to apply the same filter over here. Filter by condition. Custom formula is equals is number. And now G2, because this is column G. And I'm going to say OK. And then I can scroll down and see that all the NAs are now gone. Now, if you actually download immediately, it's still going to preserve those rows. So if I want to remove it entirely, I can just do this. I can copy. So if you see what I did there, I clicked on the top left right here to select all of it. And I just did Command C or Control C if you're on like a Windows computer or Linux, I guess. Um, and then I just copied it into sheet one here. And now you can see that all the rows that had NAs are still missing. And that's very good. So now we can go and say download. And I'll download it as a CSV file again. And that goes right there. I'm going to actually just copy this onto the command line. So I can move it into this folder and I'm just going to say uh, TMZ fixed dot CSV or like NA filtered dot CSV. It's good to be exact. So actually this file also had another issue, which is a bunch of empty rows at the bottom, but that was also fixed by simply importing into Google Sheets and exporting again, like we just did. So that's another thing to look out for. And that's why none of the columns showed up as numbers at all. Uh, it wasn't just the NAs. It was mostly this issue that prevented all the other columns aside from the P values from showing up at all. So now instead of our usual TMZ, we're going to go in here and we're going to load the new NA filtered one. And yes, and let's see if that helps. So we're just going to click around again a little bit. And now it looks like we can do it. Yay. Okay. So this is now, yes, yeah, so we're going to do chromosome start and P value, let's say, and boom. And so now we've plotted those. And this one, I can also go and, you know, change the color to something that I might prefer so that it's easier to create a legend and say, oh, this is the TMZ something. And if you forget what is what, you can go into scatter and you can see which file it's from and which values you chose for Y, for instance. So that way you can check afterwards and you don't have to redo it just in case you forgot which was which. Okay, so Hopefully that takes care of whatever you might want to do for RNA-seq analysis. Um, for any of these, if you want a Y value, the right layers are scatter, line, and area that all have chromosome position and Y because they're basically like points, but you can also connect the points or you can draw the area under that line. And of course, rectangles um, might make sense if you just want to draw where all the genes are. Um, we can try that right now. Let's try that right now. Let's try that for this one and hope that it works. Sometimes you just have to click again the plot type just to make sure that these reset. And the start position is here and the end position is here and boom. And so this gives us all the layers. Now by default it just matches the rainbow of the outside. Uh, which is pretty cute, so we can keep it that way. Or we can again go and set the color, um, but you can reset it to rainbow if you want to there. Okay, so this looks really ugly, so I'm also gonna just show how to make this look more interesting. 
So one of the things we can do is choose a different color scale. I see everybody using the default color scale, which is a little sad because I tried hard to make cool ones. Um, so you have something awesome to choose from. So here we go. Boom. That's pretty cute, right? There we go. And then I'm just going to change this to white, I guess. I want to make sure the text color is white so that you can still see this. Good, 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 good. Okay, chromosome names are in here. I think those should also be black so that you can see them. Very nice. That looks good. And then this one for the scatter plot, we can really do whatever we want, but I'll choose something nice and bright. Let's do a yellow or greenish. We'll really highlight our yellow. That's pretty good. Nice. And this was our log to full change from number one. I can also drag this. So I'm dragging the red one onto the green one because I want them to change places. Nice. And I think I want to drag this one out here. Beautiful. Now this area chart right here, I'm gonna... I could even keep this as is now that the black background makes the color is pretty cool, but I can also just change it to white, which looks kind of awesome too. And this one I will change to a different color as well. And let's make it hot pink. Nice. That looks a lot more interesting. So I'm going to save that, just Command S, and then I'm going to go up and do save as image png and i can also do an svg journals might want the svg and yeah i basically did this so that we would have a cooler looking thumbnail to show for the video okay that's it for now if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below thank you all bye